Good morning. Here I am eating my words once again. Today, well this week, we're doing Doctrine and Covenants Section 2 and Joseph Smith History Chapter 1 verses 27 through 65. And that's what we're doing today as well. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Haley, why, why just split it up this way? We are doing basically 40 some verses today. And then tomorrow we do two or three. And then we do 10 uh, or five or listen, I don't know what I was thinking when I made the, when I made the list. But that's how I did it. I thought it was good at the time. We're going to roll with it. All right. All right. So, um, first off, section two, very, very small. It's just, well, it's was given September 21st, 1823 in Manchester, New York to Joseph Smith Jr. And the prominent doctrine or theme is the coming of Elijah the prophet. Um, so basically it's just talking, it's just talking about, um, you know, turning the hearts of the fathers to the children, the sealing power, eternal families. That is the main concept that, um, we're working with here in chat in section two. Um, What do I want to what do I want to say? Because we're gonna talk about it again tomorrow. But um anyways, uh let's see. Elijah held the keys of the sealing powers of the Melchizedek priesthood and converted upon Joseph Smith. So that's basically. Anyways, um let's see. There is a difference between the spirit of Elijah and the office of Elijah. Joseph Smith explained, The spirit of Elias is to prepare the way for a greater revelation of God, which is the priesthood of Elias, or the priesthood of, that Aaron was ordained to. And when God sends a man into the world to prepare for, to prepare for a greater work, holding the keys of the power of Elias, it was called the doctrine of Elias, even from the early ages of the world. The spirit, power, and calling of Elijah is that ye have power to hold the keys of the revelation, ordinances, oracle, oracles, powers, and endowments of the fullness of the Melchizedek priesthood and of the kingdom of God on the earth, and to receive, obtain, and perform all the ordinances belonging to the kingdom of God. Uh, that's, that's section two. It's short. We're going to talk more about it tomorrow. Um, so I didn't want to get too much into it. Now, Joseph Smith history verses 27 through 65. There's some interesting stuff in there. As I was reading it last night going, why did I have us read 40 verses? Anyways. <laughs> There was some interesting stuff. And uh, first, right off the bat, in verse 28, which is like half the page, um, he talks about how, about his youthful indiscretions. And he's talking about, um, I frequently fell into foolish errors and displayed the weakness of youth and the foibles of human nature which I am sorry to say led me into diverse temptations, offensive in the sight of God. In making this confession, no one need suppose me guilty of any great or malignant sins. A, dispensi uh, a, dispen a disposition to commit such was never in my nature, but I was guilty of levity and sometimes associating with jovial company, etc. And... For the most part, I understand what levity and jovial mean, but I wanted to look it up um, just so that I could have a um, firm understanding of what he's talking about because he's saying that he was led into temptation, 
he was, um, uh, uh, I was left to all kinds of temptations and mingling with all kinds of society. I frequently fell into foolish errors and displayed the weakness. So it's, I was like, that's very interesting. I want to, I want to understand. He says, but I was guilty of levity. So I looked it up and levity basically just means taking things lightly to paraphrase or whatever. Um, so, um, just kind of, not that he denied what happened to him. He never did, but he kind of like took serious things lightly is what he's saying here. And he was a little rambunctious with his jovial company. Um, so in consequence of that, um, he's saying at the beginning that, uh, he never denied, but he was persecuted by all kinds of people, whether they were religious or not. They came after him. He didn't understand it. And he had to basically just cope with it as best he could, however he could. And, um, being jovial and, uh, that sort of thing is what since he was guilty of. Well, he decided to repent of those things, ask for another vision, and find out what his standing with God was. And this is when Moroni comes to him in the middle of the night three times, and then he, um, and then he sees the plates. He's not allowed to take them. Basically, in these verses up to 64, he, he gets taught four times on the hill Kimura, he meets his wife, marries her, and then, um, I think by verse 65, he has the plates. Yeah, by verse 65, he has the plates, and he translates some characters, and then the professor says, I cannot read a sealed book. So we all know the history of what's happening here. There are a few things in here that uh, will be interesting to discuss, uh, but I think for today, that's all I've got. I know it's not much. I know that. You know that. But that's, uh, that's all I got for today. Because tomorrow we're going to go into section two. And then the rest of the week we're going to talk about the rest of these verses. So, yeah. Just a, a quick, um, recap of what's happening. All right. Love you all. Talk to you later.